name is Chanel. I am a mother. I am a wife. And I have triple negative breast cancer. This is a story of my last year. This is my life on standby. So we moved to up to the Dalesford region from Geelong about 18 months ago and Luke and I have always loved this region. We used to come up here all the time. The lifestyle for both of us and our children is just exactly what we wanted it to be and it's, it's such a beautiful, special place to live and I'm happy to establish those roots in the children as well. We really want them to have the country roots that we both had. So it was about three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago that I didn't even realise, I was actually just sitting on the couch and must have been watching TV as you do, just holding my boobs and felt like a little kind of pea-sized lump. It, was, it kind of felt like a frozen pea just over here. And I was sitting there watching TV, felt it, and was like, oh, fuck, I'd, I'd better do something about this and got Luke over, my husband, and he kind of felt it. And we literally called up um, the next day and got a doctor's appointment. She recommended us to, um, to get a mammogram and an ultrasound. The mammogram generally you get from 40 years of age, but they said, I've actually got a family history of cancer. So my, my mum's sister, so my auntie died of breast cancer at 49, um, and my mum died of stomach cancer at 50. So because of the strong family history, they got me straight in and they said, all right, um, have the mammogram straight away, even though you're a little bit younger than the usual age to have a mammogram. So we did that, which is just a bit uncomfortable and weird, but it was fine. Um, and then went literally straight into the next room for the ultrasound. And she looked at my left breast, said it looks fine. Then she goes across to my right breast, starts focusing on where the lump is. And she said it looks to be something like this, which is like a cyst. So it's effectively nothing. She said, but there's a little bit above it that I'm not sure what that is. Um, she said, don't be surprised if from here, if your doctor, when they get the results, they send you away to get a, um, a biopsy. I'm actually just lying there looking up at the ceiling just shaking and crying. I started crying. Just surreal. I was just like and obviously I'd heard I hadn't heard the words cancer at that point but my mind was there and then I was just waiting basically just waiting and waiting and waiting and that stage it's pretty mentally torturous like it's just your mind as much as, as much as you try and control it, and you know, I've been around death and you know, cancer, and I feel like I'm actually a pretty mind, I don't know, mentally strong person, but man, those feelings that just come flooding over you, and I've got a couple of young kids, I've got a six-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter, and you just start going to those places that you, you know, yeah, you don't want to go to. So she's going to the doctors and going in a machine to do some testing. We were pretty open with them about when we found something in my breast, I kind of told them, I'm just going to the doctors, I found a lump in my breast or in my boob. Um, and I'm going in, they're going to test something and we've just kind of been telling them that. And at the moment I've kind of just been drip feeding them little bits of information knowing that something's going to come. You, she says, you give me my superhero strength. <laughs> it's true. So the Geelong appointment I think was maybe at 6.30 at night and we got a phone call about 5 o'clock and it was the Dalesford doctor and he said, hey Chanel, would you like to hear the results? I've got them here. And I just put the phone on speaker and we we're just sitting in a car park and I said, sure. Okay, so you've basically, you've got, you've got cancer, I'm so sorry. So you've got cancer in your breast and I was just, I don't know, hearing the words, I kind of wasn't in shock in a way. I think part of me had, I don't know whether yeah, I thought it was going to happen and I don't know, but I just, maybe it was just numbness, I'm not sure, but I literally just sat there and didn't cry straight away. I was just feeling it, I guess, and kind of looked at Luke and he was just going off my reaction. I think Dad's, you know, Dad's mind probably went to the worst and fair enough with losing Mum and what he'd kind of gone through with her, um, hers was a very rapid, it was stomach cancer, which generally they can't detect until it's too late. So from when she was diagnosed to when she died was about six months of 
torture, almost just watching her deteriorate and trying to help her and feeling helpless. So I think Dad was, he took it pretty hard, but I think he took comfort in hearing me actually being okay with it. Um, at that point, I think I was aware that I was still in shock because I understood how that kind of grieving process worked, I guess. I know that breast cancer exists and it can spread to your lymph nodes and through your lymphatic system, but I had no idea about how many different kinds of breast cancer there is. And there's so many. And triple negative breast cancer is, it's a lot more aggressive than a normal form of breast cancer. And it's not as um, hormonal based as a lot of other breast cancers. So it reduces down the amount of treatments that you can do. I'm talking treatments in a mainstream kind of capacity. Basically, it, it travels three times as fast as a normal breast cancer. That scared me. Um, and then of course, I jumped onto Google as I knew not to do, but I couldn't help myself. And, and then out came the onslaught of just terrifying stories. I've said to people numerous times over the years, if I ever get cancer, I, there is no way I'm going down the mainstream path. No way, not for me. Why would you fill your body with toxins when our bodies are designed to heal themselves when they're in the, the optimum state? I kind of felt a little bit uncomfortable when, when, my, when I started shifting from alternative to mainstream. I felt a little bit uncomfortable talking to people that I knew were more alternative minded because that's exactly what I was like and I still am, which is weird to say, but you know, the more I found out about this type of cancer, the more peace I came to, I guess, with, you know what, I kind of have to meet its aggression and, and this just feels like the best way to go about it. It feels like the place that I'm most comfortable with and I'm acutely aware of how important my mind is during this process and if this is what's feeling the best and the safest, then that's what I'm going to do. When I spoke to Luke about it, he wasn't as aware on how aggressive this form of cancer was. And I think once he started to find out how aggressive it was and how fast we kind of had to act, and my brother was the same, my alternative brother, felt like my team around me was all on board and it just felt it felt so good at that point. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. So basically, I'm going to start chemo on Friday. Chemo is mighty medicine. It poisons the sneaky, hidden cancer. I was struggling at the time with trying to visualise the future. Like, I kept trying to get myself mentally to focus on things in the future and visualise it. I really believe that how powerful our mind is. And I'm like, I need to get my mind right. This is really important. I thought, you know what? I need to be the success story that I couldn't find. And just thinking that was literally like a game changer for my mind. And I was like, that's it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be the success story and it's gonna be real and hard and confronting. Because I feel like there's gotta be some greater purpose to this. It's not just about my growth and then me dying. There is more to this. And I know that that's a possibility, that it might, I might get bad news, you know, I know that. And that thought's crossed my mind. It's like, if I die, the kids will have this, the family will have this, and focusing my energy on that and hopefully doing something and having the capacity to give and help others afterwards, it just makes me incredibly proud of myself. And I'm, yeah, I'm really proud of myself. Mama is a cancer-fighting superhero. Mm -hmm. Love you, Dawn. Love you. Love you, Dawn. Mm -hmm.